As far as I can tell, what we know about George Gascoigne, 1535 to 1577, is either damn little or a lot that must be wrong. The accounts vary so widely, often contradicting one another. This much we can be reasonably sure of. He wrote the controversial short novel, the Adventures of Master F.J., one of the earliest English prose fictions. He wrote the play Supposes, the first prose comedy in English. And he wrote considerable poetry, including The Steel Glass, very nearly the first true satire in English, according to Habel Hudson et al. Finally, another first, lots of firsts. George Gascoigne wrote Certain Notes of Instruction, the earliest treatise on English prosody. His best-known work was published in 1573 under the wonderful title A Hundred Sundry Flowers Bound Up in One Small Poesy Gathered Partly by translation, in the fine outlandish gardens of Euripides, Ovid, Petrarch, Ariosto, and others, and partly by invention out of our own fruitful orchards in England, yielding sundry savors of tragical, comical, and moral discourse, both pleasant and profitable to the well-smelling noses of learned readers. It purported then to be an anthology of translations and of courtly poets gathered and edited by Gascoigne. In fact, it was written entirely by him. Judged to be offensive, the hundred sundry flowers were seized by Her Majesty's High Commissioners, according to Felicity Hughes. Undeterred, Gascoigne republished the book with certain additions and deletions two years later under the more honest title, The Poesies of George Gascoigne, Esquire, which was also ruled offensive and seized by the same high commissioners. The delightful, deep desire sung this song was published posthumously in a 1587 collection the whole works of George Gascoigne. In no English poem I know is alliteration so much and so amusingly and pleasingly used. Counterpice in the second stanza means balance, and starve in the same stanza means simply die. Death has its frequent sexual connotations in the poem. This is, after all, a poem about desire. The title says as much. Deep Desire sung this song. Come, muses, come and help me to lament. Come woods, come waves, come hills, come doleful dales. Since life and death are both against me bent, come gods, come men, bear witness of my bales. O heavenly nymphs, come help my heavy heart, with sighs to see, dame pleasure, thus depart. If death or dole could daunt a deep desire, if privy pangs could counterpise my plaint, if tract of time a true intent could fire, or cramps of care a constant mind could taint? Oh, then might I at will here live and starve, although my deeds did more delight deserve. But out, alas, no gripes of grief suffice to break in twain this harmless heart of mine. 
yet lives desire, whom pains can never pine. O strange affects, I live which seem to die, yet die to see my dear delight go by. Then farewell, sweet, for whom I taste such sour. Farewell, delight, for whom I dwell in dole. Free will, farewell, farewell, my fancy's flower. Farewell, content, whom cruel cares control. O oh, farewell, life, delightful death, farewell. I die in heaven, yet live in darksome hell.